With the recent reveal and subsequent demo slash release of Kazuya Mishima for Smash, we have been given an expiration date for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Sakurai himself really hammering home that this last character in Fighters Pass 2 will in fact be the last one to touch Smash Ultimate as a whole. And we know that whoever this last character ends up being, it will be revealed and released by the end of 2021. We have five or so months until that happens, which means we have been given a countdown clock before this big grand moment in our lives is over. And I am convinced that I know who the final character is going to be. And that is the poster child for the Xbox, the Master Chief. Hey everyone, I'm RV Rocks, and predicting Smash characters is always a bit of a weird game, because between the two fighter passes, we have seen a pretty wide breadth of characters. From Nintendo characters who missed the cutoff for Smash Ultimate's base roster to third-party bombshells, there's no consistent rhyme or reason for any of the Smash DLC characters. And even less so for the timing when they were released. I think the only character in Ultimate's DLC cycle whose reveal directly tied into some kind of other event was Steve being revealed a little while before Minecon, and no one saw that coming. So you may be wondering, if there is no rules or consistency at all within the Smash space, why am I so sure that the Chief is the final character to grace Smash Ultimate? Well, let's look at what we know. For one, I think Nintendo and Sakurai will want Smash Ultimate to end on a big character. Smash 4 had its fair share of exciting and less exciting DLC characters, but it ended with Bayonetta, being a sex-oriented character whose games were violent, bloody, and full of their fair share of boob jiggle. And at the time, it was a bit of a shock to see such a character grace Smash Bros, despite many people, myself included, pushing for the character in the lead-up to Smash 4's release. Everything about Bayonetta kinda pushed what we saw as acceptable in Smash, both content-wise and balance-wise. Like, yeah, we had Snake in the last game, who was a real-ass dude with real-ass weapons, but Snake's weapons are all weapons that the average person couldn't get their hands on. But then here comes Bayonetta, losing clothes on every Smash attack, shooting pistols, and causing people to leave in droves at EVO 2018. I think Chief could fill a similar niche for Smash Ultimate, but there's a large asterisk there. That being, since Smash Ultimate has included every single character and more from past Smash, there is arguably less impact from such a character joining the roster. But Chief could easily be this game's Bayonetta in terms of pushing the envelope. He's a character from another mature game, and would be the first character to truly come from a rival platform. Of course, we have Steve and Banjo, who are technically owned by Microsoft, but these characters were created and are more so associated with Mojang and Rareware specifically. There's Sonic, but when was the last time Sega was considered a real rival? And yeah, Snake, Cloud, and Kazuya are all icons from the PS1, but Konami, Square, nor Bamco have ever really been a direct rival to Nintendo. However, the Chief would be the first character to be truly owned by a rival in the hardware space, being Microsoft's baby. And yeah, Halo may be a mature series, but with all of his weapons being more space age and futuristic themed, they could easily get away with having it in an E10 Plus rated game. And think about it, back in the day we had all these ridiculous rules and stipulations about which characters could appear in Smash, and almost all of them have come breaking down since then. What better way to end Smash Ultimate than to basically have the most cardinal of those rules, affiliation with Nintendo, come breaking down right in front of them? Other than that though, Chief just has ridiculous potential in the Smash environment. Every character in Fighters Pass 2 has had some kind of gimmick aside from just normal smashing. And while I can't think of a good one for the Chief, just look at the Halo franchise over the years and you'll be able to see a moveset come to form. Tons and tons of guns, a fair share of melee weapons, a perfect final smash in the form of one of the most iconic cutscenes to ever grace gaming, and a million possible alternate costumes, with even just recolors probably being satisfying enough for most Halo fans. There's something about the Spartan suit that is both sci-fi as hell while grounding it in reality. I love this thing and you can't deny the ridiculous amount of potential that Halo could bring to Smash. You can base Chief's appearance on any one Halo game and still have a full and complete character. Or you can take a little from all the games and get an even better one. As with any franchise that's had this many games all following one gameplay style, there's just so much you could do with this character and with all of his appearances throughout the years. But the most important reason why I think Chief will get into Smash is the impact of it all. In the past few years, Microsoft, or more specifically Xbox's whole MO has been inclusivity in gaming. This idea that no matter who you are, or what technology you own, or how much money you have, you should be able to game. Which, despite your feelings on any console war shenanigans, you have to admit, 
that's pretty fucking cool. The adaptive controller, Xbox Game Pass, all of Xbox's exclusives coming to PC as well, games like Cuphead and Ori being allowed on Switch, Xbox All Access, xCloud, all of these things have painted Xbox as pretty good guys in the gaming space. It's no longer a team versus team, green versus blue thing for them. They just want the gaming space to be even more awesome. They've done a complete 180 from their weird maneuvers in the Xbox One days, and that's noble as hell. Even more noble that during the whole Apple vs Epic Games court thing, Microsoft said that the Xbox consoles have never been profitable. They are literally just in it to make gaming better, and that is awesome! And no better way to personify this attitude than by having their character appear in Super Smash Bros, the world's biggest gaming crossover. Nintendo and Microsoft have already been playing buddy-buddy a lot in the past few years, Chief is in Fortnite, it would bring this whole Xbox being the nice guys thing full circle. And you know what? Maybe Master Chief isn't destined for Super Smash Bros. But maybe he is. Everything about this situation leads me to believe that he will be the final character to grace Fighters Pass 2 and Smash Ultimate as a whole. Finishing the fight, if you will. And if he doesn't, feel free to come laugh at me in a few months time. But if you ask me, the writing is on the wall. And if you think that my channel's growth is writing on the wall, then why don't you subscribe, like this video, and comment your thoughts on the whole Master Chief being in Smash idea. I have another video talking about my other conspiracy for Fighters Pass 2 here, and with the semi-recent release of Kazuya, that theory still holds water. However, if they go for Master Chief as this game's final character, I don't think it'll hold up that well. I don't know, go watch that other video and tell me which timeline that I have created you believe is the correct one either in the comments or on Twitter at RP of Rocks. But before you do any of that, I have been RV Rocks, and thank you so much for watching. See ya!